So Caitlin Huey Burns is on Capitol Hill now with more reaction from lawmakers in the aftermath of the deadly shooting. Uh, you know, we've heard a lot of sort of comments that fall into the category of thoughts and prayers, and, uh, and no doubt uh, these politicians are sincere about their feelings, but nothing ever really gets done. We have two gun safety bills that have already passed in the House last year. They stalled in the Senate. What is going on with those bills? Good morning, Anne-Marie. Well, yeah, it falls into, an, unfortunately, an, a familiar pattern for us. We have a mass shooting, come up here to Capitol Hill, talk to lawmakers and see what kind of reaction they have. And it bears out that there's no support for moving forward with these bills. Uh, you're right to note that there are two bills uh, that are awaiting uh, uh, debate in the Senate. Uh, Chuck Schumer has made the procedural steps to bring them up, but Congress is recessing today for Memorial Day recess and isn't coming back until June, which means that they won't even get to debate on these bills, if at all, until a couple of weeks. And we know, as you and I have discussed so many times up here, that the biggest impediment to any sort of legislation is the passage of time. You lose momentum, you lose political will, you lose uh, public pressure. And so that's what's at stake here. Uh, but Democrats are saying that they know where Republicans stand, that taking a vote on these bills just for the sake of it isn't going to send any more messages than they've already been able to send or they've already tried to send uh, to voters. Uh, but there's also a feeling up here among people like Chris Murphy, who represents Connecticut, who in the when he was in the House, he represented Newtown. He's been trying to work with Republicans just to find enough Republicans, you only need 10, to come over and support something on gun legislation. Uh, you, we have also heard from Senator Joe Manchin, uh, the Democrat from West Virginia, who several years ago introduced a background check measure with uh, Republican Senator Pat Toomey of Pennsylvania. I covered that bill. It failed to gain enough support to even make it through the procedural hurdles. He says that he wants to bring that up again, uh, but uh, there isn't enough support at this time. And it's important to note on that bill, it's a very, you know, bare bones uh, background check bill. There were exceptions for uh, selling to your family members. Um, so even something like that does not have enough support at this time. And with Congress slated to go on recess, uh, that momentum figures to uh, dissipate. Uh, you know, the word support is almost a little confusing to me because the members of Congress, their job is to reflect the desires of their constituents. So where does the support when it comes to Americans, where does it land? What what does the recent CBS mm -hmm. News polling reveal about America's uh, Americans opinions on gun laws? Well, our recent CBS News poll shows that 54% of Americans favor stricter gun laws. Uh, but when you look at the partisan breakdown, that's really where uh, the sticking points are here. Um, you see 54% say uh, that they want stricter gun laws. Um, but when you look at the Democrats versus Republican breakdown, 79% uh, of Democrats say that they favor more strict laws. But 49% of Republicans say they want to keep it as is. And even 24% say that they want to make it less. Strict. And we know in Texas at the state level, they passed bills last year to ease restrictions further on guns. But it's very interesting as we talk about kind of the political calculations of lawmakers up here, because remember, uh, as you know, you covered Park, the Parkland shooting. Uh, after that, Florida was able to pass some restrictions on guns. They raised the minimum, minimum age to buy a gun from 18 to 21. Uh, they instituted a red flag law that um, allows a court order to, to confiscate Gate guns from those who have been deemed mentally ill by the court. Uh, so there is support for those kinds of things. Um, Rick Scott was the governor at the time. He signed those bills into law in Florida. Uh, you do have Republican states that have red flag laws. You've had Republicans up here working on legislation around that very issue for years. Uh, so when we look at kind of the political calculations here, there are a lot of questions about why there is some resistance when you have the public polling showing support, when you have states uh, that are led by Republicans uh, having passed some of these measures. But up here on Capitol Hill, for whatever reason, it still remains elusive. And we are in the middle of primary season. We're heading into an election year. Uh, that, of course, complicates the political calculations, of course. But I, you know, I got to say, we've covered so much of this on Capitol Hill, and we talk about all the, you know, movements from lawmakers. 
But outside Washington and around the country, everybody is asking, okay, but why can't something get done? Why can't something be done to at least show that you're addressing this issue of mass violence, especially when it comes to children? So that's the big question that still looms over here. Mm -hmm. Well, campaigns are expensive, Caitlin. Thank you.